Hi, I'm Karen Collins. I'm talking today with Dr. Susan Stack, who's a registered dietitian and associate professor of epidemiology and biostatistics at the University of South Carolina in Columbia. Much of her work involves the intersection of inflammation and chronic diseases like cardiovascular disease and cancer. So it's a really hot topic and something that I know many people want to know more about. Where do you see the, the strongest evidence right now in terms of particular mm -hmm. components of our food? So we've actually done a, a substantial literature review on this area. Um, in fact, in creating the Dietary Inflammatory Index, we reviewed over close to 2,000 articles um, examining 45 different dietary components, macronutrients, micronutrients, phytochemicals, certain herbs and spices in relation to uh, six of the inflammatory markers, the well-known, well-studied markers. So some of the things that, that popped out as being particularly anti-inflammatory were some of the herbs and spices, um, things like ginger and turmeric, uh, saffron, um, and then some of the other antioxidants like vitamin C. Um, fiber in particular is very anti-inflammatory. Mm -hmm. um, and then some of the things that were more pro-inflammatory were our usual suspects like um, saturated fat, trans fats, um, refined, you know, energy dense refined carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. Foods that are high in saturated fat, which red and processed meats tend to be, um, have, are going to have a pro-inflammatory effect or mm -hmm. um, at least on our dietary inflammatory index, the score would be more towards a pro-inflammatory score. Um, but there may be other factors in red and processed meats that that could contribute to that. That just didn't go into our right. dietary inflammatory score. Uh, but things like you know heme iron. Or as much as we've learned, there is still like a mountain of, <laughs> uh, to learn more, right? Know, yes. we, you look back, you say, "Wow, we've learned a lot." But you look this <laughs> way, it's like, "Wow, with so many questions." Definitely. Yeah. Now, a tea was another one of the foods that you found to be protective, right? Right, right. So tea tends to have an anti-inflammatory effect. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we are not distinguishing between black tea and green tea. I think both of oh, them okay. have um, some anti-inflammatory properties. We always hear the great things about green tea. Right. Um, and certainly for cancer prevention, there's a lot of research uh, suggesting that green tea may be beneficial. Mm -hmm. But at this point, since at there are point, also think, compounds, different compounds, right. but also the arubigans and things like that in the black tea, right. that could be also. Correct. So at this point, you're just talking tea. You're not right. saying specifically green tea. That's correct. Yes. Okay. Okay. More to come on that, too, I'm sure. Yes. Yeah. Um, what, what about the unsaturated fats? We talked about saturated fat mm -hmm. and trans fats being um, promoters of inflammation. Especially the omega-3 polyunsaturated fats. Um, there's been a lot of research. That was one of the nutrient, uh, the 45 that... Uh, just had uh, so many studies that have been published in that area, and they do tend to lean towards that anti-inflammatory uh, um, property. Um, and then the omega-6, you know, there's a lot of research in understanding the ratio between omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acid intake, um, but that ratio may be more important, really, than just overall omega-6 intake. Um, but certainly, we get a lot of our omega-6 from processed foods. Um, and so there's a, a little bit of confounding there in the relationship uh, between omega-6 yeah. and infl inflammation because of the types of foods that it, they're found in. Mm -hmm. That's an excellent point. Mm -hmm. So anytime we see a study that's just looking at, say, omega-6, because now they have found pathways that omega-6 may not always be um, pro-inflammatory, right. that part of the evidence may relate to what it is you're getting it in and mm -hmm. what else is exactly. accompanying that. So exactly. omega-6 from a highly processed, sugar-laden, no-nutrient food compared to right. omega-6 from healthy nuts or something like exactly. that could be totally different. Because, in different. fact, nuts were on the anti-inflammatory side, right? Um, or where right. are they? So nuts in general, are, you know, the actual food is not in our index, but in terms of the nutrients that they provide, they would be considered something that you would want to consume to try to reduce the inflammatory potential of your diet, right, towards more anti-inflammatory. Well, of course, one of the important things as we look at what this means for people is we don't eat single nutrients, and we also don't eat single foods. We eat foods as they come together in a right. whole eating pattern. And so that's a part of where this dietary inflammatory index that you've developed has, has come right. from, right? Right. Can you tell us about the, the thought process that went into this index? Sure. Yeah, so I, just like you said, it, it's not just an individual nutrient 
um, or even an in individual food that's going to affect our inflammatory uh, response or our health, but it's the combination of the foods and nutrients that we're consuming. And that was the thought process that went into developing the index, um, was that we wanted to, to capture the whole diet. Um, because, you know, certain foods may have um, little, maybe higher sugar, but then they may have more, you know, fruits may have more flavonoids or phytochemicals or antioxidants. Um, and so we want to balance that out and, and think about the whole diet mm -hmm. and what people are eating. Um, and so we actually looked at, like I said, 45 different dietary factors, macronutrients, micronutrients, uh, vitamins, minerals, different herbs and spices, and, um, you know, took the totality of the evidence for those 45 factors. And then we now are applying that to dietary assessment methods that have assessed individuals' diets from food frequency questionnaires or 24-hour recalls, food records, um, anything that can give us a daily intake estimates mm -hmm. for many of these dietary components. Um, and then we are applying that now to studies of cancer and other disease outcomes to see if there is an association between the dietary inflammatory index and these disease outcomes. And what's the answer so far? <laughs> so.